Hi, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship with the fifth in my series on test-driven development in JavaScript. Um, in this video, we're going to be examining a topic that um, um, a lot of people have opinions on, and it confuses a lot of people who are new to test-driven development, to be honest. It confuses quite a few developers who've been doing TDD for a while. Um, so the, the topic of this video is inside-out TDD versus outside in TDD. You may have heard these phrases before, and what I'm going to be doing is illustrating both approaches and talking about some of the advantages and disadvantages of both. Okay, so let's start with inside-out test-driven development. So what that means essentially is when we're writing our, our tests, our failing tests, we're writing them for pieces of the inner jigsaw. We're writing tests for part of the internal design. And then we're building up those pieces of the jigsaw one at a time so that we can then sort of put them all together at the end at a higher level to uh, to satisfy the overall behaviors, the overall tests that we thought of. So I'm using the Mars rover um, cata example again, and there'll be a link to that in the description below. And I've already done quite a bit of work on this already, working at a, at a low level, test driving parts of the jigsaw for my Mars rover. So here's my test list, the list of tests I think I will need to pass in order to implement my Mars rover. So I've got four tests for the, turning the rover to the right, from the north to the east, from the east to the south, and so on. So turning it right sort of clockwise. Um, and you'll see in my tests that I've got, I'll just show you there, for that first parameterized test there, if you're not sure what a parameterized test is, please look at the, um, the previous video. Um, for my... Um, my fourth, for my parameterized test here, I've got my four cases, and you'll notice if I just highlight there that what I'm actually testing is is directly testing a function called right. So this is a function that will turn the rover to the right, and my intention is that when I build the overall rover that will accept sequences of commands to go right or left or forward or back, that um, when I tell it to go right, it will invoke this function. Um, so it's at a lower level. It's a piece of the jigsaw. It's not the 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 um, the API, if you like, to the um, to the rover. It's part of the internal design of the rover. Okay, so I've done that, got those passing, and then I moved on to turning the rover to the left. So it's moving anti-clockwise in the other direction. Um, and I wrote a, a bunch of unit tests, which I've now refactored into a single parameterized test for turning it to the left. And again, you'll see as I highlight here. Um, we're actually directly invoking a function that turns the rover to the left. So again, it's another piece of the internal jigsaw. Um, and I carried on working in that fashion. So a test for moving it forward, a test for moving it backwards, that are directly testing functions for moving the rover forwards and moving the rover backwards in the opposite direction to which it's facing. Um, and then finally, I've written some tests for mapping Command. So the idea with the Mars rover is we send a, a string, which is a sequence of characters, F for forward, B for back, R for right, L for left, and it interprets this sequence of command, um, commands, these, these instructions, um, and then it, um, it executes each instruction. And what I've tested here is mapping those characters, R, L, F, and B, onto the right function, um, right, left, forward, and back. So what I've got here at the moment is, is pieces of the jigsaw, the internal design. And what I need to do finally is put that jigsaw together at a higher level and create the API, if you like, for our, our Mars rover that will execute a sequence of these instructions. Um, so I've started writing this test and we'll just pick it up at this point. So write the assertion and work backwards. So let's start with the simplest case, which is just a single instruction. So a string with only one instruction in it. There's our rover, and what we're saying is, let's say, for example, we tell the, the rover to turn right. So we're going to change the way that it's facing. So if it was facing north, it should end facing east, like so. And let's work backwards from here. So let's declare that local variable. Let's make it um, an object, which has a direction that it's facing in. So it starts facing north. And now we need a function that will execute that single instruction. So let's call this function execute or exec. And uh, let's say for the rover, go right. 
So we're now creating that R instruction. Let's, um, we'll declare this function inside this test module for now. It's fine. OK. And that's our instructions. So eventually, this will be a, a sequence of instructions, a whole string. But for now, a single character will do. And if we run our tests, this test should be failed because it's not actually executing the instruction. And that's fine. That's what we're expecting to happen. OK, now to pass this test, all we need to do is, is use a part of the jigsaw we've already created, which is this command function, which looks up the right command, the right function. So just for that single thing. Um, and then we will execute that command for our rover like that. So it should find the right function. It should execute it and return the rover, the copy of the rover that's created by that function. So let's just run that and see. OK, that's looking good. And the, the second test case I thought I would probably need. Uh, remember, we've, we've written the code to handle all of the individual moves. So now we're just mapping instructions, sequences of instructions. So, so the second test case I thought I might need to do is when there's more than one um, one command in that sequence of instructions. So let's create a second test for this. So execute a sequence of instructions. Okay, and again, working backwards from the assertion. So what we're saying is this time our rover should end up facing south because we're going to turn it to the right twice from north. So let's do that. Let's create our rover. So notice how I'm working backwards from the assertion. Here. So I'm only creating the setup that I need to ask the question that I want to ask. So we start facing north. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, again, using this exact function, we're going to give it two instructions, two commands. There you go. And when we run that, it should be facing east at the moment. It's only going to do it once. Oh, no. Nope. Command is not a function. Oh, OK. So what's happened here is it, uh, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't find any instruction, basically. It doesn't find it. Um, so what we need to do now is we probably probably the simplest way of doing this would be to do a, a map. So handily, we can treat a string in JavaScript as an array of characters. So let's use a map. And what we're going to, uh, not a map, a reduce, I think would we'll probably do it because we need to return something here. So we're going to be, each of these functions when it's executed will return a copy of the rover that's been mutated. Um, and um, what we can do is we can use reduce to assign the copy that's returned to an accumulator, basically, which is the rover. Let's call that R. And for each instruction, so for each character in that array sequence, this is going to be an arrow function. So uh, and the first one value we start with is the instance that was passed into this function. Um, so that will basically loop through. It will go through every um, character in the sequence of instructions. It will look up the right command, the right function. Um, it will pass the current rover, the one that's being in inverted commas accumulated, um, starting as an input with the rover that was passed into this function. So it's a little involved there, but hopefully it'll work. Nope, it doesn't work. <laughs> OK. Um, and that's because it's not instructions, it's instruction. It's the individual character that should be passed in. It's a good job we've got tests, isn't it? Right, there we go. And there's my rover working. There's a little bit of cleanup to do here. This doesn't really belong here, so let's get rid of this. What we're going to do is we're going to, um, let's make it the first. Makes sense there. Let's put
put it into our implementation, paste it in there. And let's add it to our exports. OK. And now we go back to our test. They should still be all running. Lovely. OK. So there you have it. That's inside out test driven development. What I did was I started by test driving pieces of the internal jigsaw. And then I eventually built up to a point where all I had to do was write a couple of tests for the, the, the top layer, the entry point to the rover, if you like. Um, and then it was all done. Now, one of the advantages of this approach is that if any of these tests fail, they directly point, pinpoint which part of the internal design the error is in. So they're really, really good for debugging, for pinpointing problems. Um, but they also have disadvantages. And it's probably quite easy to see that if we take a look at our rover here, take a look down at its exports, it's exporting almost the entire internal design. And we are binding our test code to pretty much the entire internal design. Most of the internal details are exposed. So what we've got here is a test that is very tightly bound to the internal design of our rover. So we know if we want to refactor and change that design, we're going to have to rewrite a lot of test code. A lot of our test code is going to break. So we've, we've got very low encapsulation here. The innards of our rover are exposed to the rest of the code. Uh, and that can be very, very problematic. So inside-out design can lead to tests that pinpoint problems very easily. For the, you know, it's this function that failed, et cetera, et cetera. But we pay a price for that, which is we're exposing more of the internal design of the thing that we're testing. Um, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to demonstrate um, how we can drive it the other way around, drive the design from the outside in, um, so that what we end up with is tests that are exposed to as little of the design of the rover, as little of the internal details as possible. So that's what we'll do next.